I'm glad you could join me on the channel today. I welcome you. This is um, a very great movement with you once again. And today we're going to be sharing this very great message together. And it is a rabbi who, you know, reverted to Islam after listening to or getting evidence of, uh, you know, the authenticity of Islam. How true is this story? I've seen, uh, I think, something like this on a website before I read through, and um, it was quite confusing. But what really happened? How and why was he actually searching for the truth and what came out from it? So I want to know really what um, motivated this rabbi to go that deep and then finally accepting Islam. If it's true, it will actually confirm what I have been saying for quite a while here on the channel, that Islam has a very deep philosophical root and of course one can actually prove it using theological arguments. So therefore, someone cannot say that Islam don't have um, like an organized body of uh, you know, thought that has to do with God. It's quite deep, it's amazing, it has developed over the centuries. And so no one can actually say that Islam is backward and therefore doesn't have an organized form of thought and can, or cannot be defended theologically. Well, let's look at this video. I'll be right back with my reaction. Don't go anywhere. Assalamu alaikum, my friend. I have a message to all my Ishmaelite brothers. La ilaha illallah, Muhammadan Rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum. Now, we're going to go to Genesis 21.13. We're going to see another anti-Semitic attack on Ishmael, the seed of Ishmael. What, Masoretic? Read from the Samaritan first. Okay. And also the son of this, and this is strong, this made, will I make a, and then great, it's uh, put in bold, great nation. So this is bold, great is bolded, nation, because he is your descendant. Now, I want you to read it from the Masoretic text, Summer. And also of the son of the bondwoman, will I make a nation, because he is I see. Well, hold on now. We're going to see the difference here. Samaritan says, son of this may, and the word great shows up. I'm going to read from the Masoretic text slowly so we can see it. So... And also, the son of a bondwoman, will I make a nation, because he is thy seed. Now, bond means purchased. There's some type of a transaction. It's Seems so bonded. Like a negative, negative There's thought a process. There's a note on her. Um, of course, we see that's not true. Because, because in order for Hagar to be a wife of our patriarch, Abraham, she must follow the halakha, the commandments of Hashem, and she is called a wife. From there, we're going to go to Genesis 25, 16. One page over. Excellent. These Excellent. are the sons of Yishmael, and these are the names by their yards and by their castles, 12 chiefs according to their tribes. And these are the years of the life of Yishmael, 137 years, and he breathed his last and died and was gathered to his people. Wow. 12 tribes. 12 tribes of Ishmael. So this Ishmael, back then, when they give you a name, is because you continued on your genealogy with that tribe. We're going to talk about this later on. But I have a question. Could Ishmael's descendants become lost in the Crusades? That's a question I'd like to answer sometime. We can talk about this um, later. and We're going to find out and we'll, we'll let you know. In Isaiah 60, 1 through 7, a prophecy about a prophet bringing a light of Hashem to the world. This holy prophet or holy man would appear in a time of darkness filling the world and covering the earth. He would appear to eliminate the darkness and spread the light of Hashem and his praises. In Isaiah 60 verse 7, we know plainly as about Kadar where its flocks and tribes would be gathered together. 
We go to also book of Jasher, Hayashar, chapter 25, verse 16, which is also found in Bereshit, Genesis chapter 25, verse 13. Also, 1 Chronicles 1, 29, and it says, And Riba bare unto Ishmael, Nabioth, Kedar, and Abdil, and so on. All the flocks of Kedar is referring to tribes of Ishmael, which may refer to also Muhammad. I also discovered in Isaiah, Ishiyahu, chapter 60, verse 7, All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee, rams of Nabioth shall minister unto thee, they shall come up with acceptance of Hashem's altar, and he will glorify the house of, of his glory. When he says, and I will glorify the house of my glory, it's referring to, it could only be Kaaba. In Mecca, the sacred house the, for the glory of Elohim that Avraham built with Ishmael. We also discussed uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16. Yes, the name Muhammad does show up. It does say Muhammadim, but the name Muhammad is very plainly in the text. I finish this with Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. I am black. This video, I worked on it uh, about a year ago on it. Um, and it's been sitting there and finally ran into it. It's, it's called Ishmael, Ishmael, the son of Abraham, the son of Ibrahim. So we're going to go right to it. We're going to see the first time Ishmael shows up the name. It's going to be on Bereshit, and it's going to be under Genesis 16, 11. My wife's going to read from the Samaritan text. And the angel Shehma said to her, Behold, you are with child, and you will bear a son, and you shall call his name Yishmael, because Shahma has heard your affliction. He will be fertile of man. Now, can we show what it is? I'm already there. Okay. Did you read 1612? Yes, I did. He okay. will be fertile of man. I'm going to show something interesting right off the bat. This is why it's so important that people should know about Ishmael. When you read Genesis 1612 from the Masoretic text, this is what it's going to say. And we're going to go straight to Genesis 16, 12. And this is a very big difference. A very big difference. These are the variants between the Samaritan Bible and the Masoretic text and the New Age translations, of course. But also the King James Version. That's correct. And he will be a wild man. So this one says Hold fertile. On. That one says wild. His hand will be against every man. And every man's hand against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Now, just from reading this, it is such a negative connotation. connotation. It denotes the seed of Abraham that Hashem said that I will bless your seed. I will make you now, fruitful. I'm going to Fertile. show, once again, what the Samaritan says. So read for us. Text, Genesis, Bereshit 16, 12, from the Samaritan text. He will be fertile of man. Hold on. Masoretic text says, wild man. That says fertile. It is not good for man to be alone. Man must procreate. You must multiply. This is what Father says. You must procreate. Keep going. So going on, his hand will be with everyone. Now, listen, with everyone. As opposed to? Masoretic text, against. Now, against and with, there's a lot of difference. Now keep going. Uh, and everyone's hand will be with him. Hmm. Everyone's hand will be against him. This is the Masoretic text. And he will live among all his brethren. Interesting enough, the last verse matches perfectly. He's going to be with his brethren. Now, we're going to see what that him. means. Because we're going to see going forward, he's going to be with his brother when they're ready to bury Abraham. Now, we're going to read from these new translations. This is for our Christian brothers. I'm going to show how anti-Semitic the Christians have really become with these translations. 
This is from the NIV. And the NIV is new international, international version. version. Did you hear these new, new, new? No, new, new, new. I'm going to read it. Wild donkey of a man. So not only are they calling him wild, wild but they're also donkey. saying he's a donkey. Now here, JPS, what does it stand for? Jewish Publication Society. Look at the date, 1917. What's going on in it's 1917? after World KJV. War I. Now, JPS says ass of a man. So he's not going to call him a donkey. They're going to call him an ass. This video is quite in-depth and um, I really appreciate you know how it went basically because I know that you know videos like this are the sort of videos I like watching if you are the person that recommended this video really appreciate and say thank you because apart from uh, you know reacting to it and, and you know publishing it on this ch on this channel today I have been touched in a very different way by this video one because of its uh, you know elucidation of this very topic I've been looking for ways to discuss here on this channel and of course also exposing my research because for a very long time now something I've not shared with you on this channel I've been making frantic effort to ensure that I am able to study, you know, some of the reasons or evidences that backs up the fact that the Kaaba, you know, has something to do with the, the Kaaba in the Bible and what they call the Prince of the Arabia and how Muhammad can perfectly say to be from the descendants of, uh, you know, Ishmael. And if it's true that Muhammad or the Arabian Peninsula or people living in Arabia today are descendants from, uh, you know, Abraham it means also just like the Bible pointed out that these people are part and parcel of Abraham therefore they inherit the promise of God to dominate the world so no one can safely land on that simple fact that uh, the Arabian Peninsula people of the Arabia or people of the Seda of the Kada and not really part of the you know great promise like most Christians would like to argue so it's a very simple fact and that's the meat I'm taking away from this video deliberate attempt to water down the role of Ishmael is something quite sad because it uh, leaves us with doubt on how authentic the Bible is and how uh, the, the amount of influence the people who wrote the Bible had and of course the bias that they had in their minds it's quite pathetic yeah very very pathetic when one is looking at it from a very objective point of view would you say that there was a problem with these guys who were translating the bible or would you say it was a ter deliberate uh, you know attempt to keep you know the coast clean so that people will not argue or doubt you know the authenticity of the christian faith what really happened why would someone for crying out loud alter the meaning of something for his own personal you uh, personal benefit or for the benefit of the church whatever arguments you may have about it, the bible said do not remove or do not add anything from the word of god if truly the bible said so and what that and uh, and and it, it's coming from god it means that anyone who who, who alters the bible is really doing that to his own detriment and if you deliberately you know mislead a group of people for your own benefit or to preserve a particular you know idea from criticisms you are wrong and when people discover it they leave your religion and that's exactly what this rabbi did and that's what exactly others will do from today I have established a new way of looking at the scriptures before I look at the particular scripture, I have to, you know, obviously go behind or on the background to really know the story behind every of them. And that's a tax I'm going to involve myself pretty soon because I strongly believe that any effort you make towards learning and, you know, brush yourself up from first ignorance and the general, you know, what I call the, the mass 
uh, agreement, you would actually see that you would be more fulfilled and be able to think for yourself, be independent, and, you know, of course, be a better person and more educated. Well, that's where I'm going to end it here on this uh, video, but uh, I sincerely know that you've picked one or two things about this video. But then, catch you next time.